Do the BRICS really make a coherent group? The answer from one point of view is clearly no. You've got two big uh, commodity importers in China and India. You've got three other big commodity exporters in Brazil, Russia and South Africa. You've got countries, two of the big four with big current account surpluses. You've got two with big current account deficits. So they've got all sorts of different interests and priorities and policies. Uh, not a great deal in common, except that for all of them, in a way, it makes sense to challenge the existing architecture of global governance and they don't feel that they're getting bang for their buck at the IMF and the World Bank. So this is another institution that provides an alternative to that and pushes their, what shared agenda they do have, pushes that forward. In the report that we had in the FT today, there's, there's various uh, suggestions put forward about what it might mean for each individual country. I don't think there is, apart from this idea of global governance, I don't think there is a, uh, a, a, a shared objective in terms of what they would want this thing to finance. Um, and why do you need it? It's not very big. It's $50 billion uh, initial capital. Uh, it's much smaller than the China's own development bank. It's smaller than Brazil's own development bank. It's smaller than the World Bank. Uh, how much can it do? It's a bit of extra cash for the development bank community, but you have to wonder uh, how much is it going to do to bring more transparency to the world of development banking? Uh, what sort of priorities are going to drive the, the allocation of funds? I think one suggestion that was put forward by uh, Jim O'Neill, who came up with the whole BRICS acronym in the first place, which I think makes a lot of sense, is that uh, China, which is has shown itself to be reluctant to take a leading role in the world. You remember it was uh, not at all happy when uh, people said that it was already overtaking the US as the world's biggest economy in PPP terms. It didn't like that. It may feel that it's going to have to step up to the plate sometime soon and take a bigger role. Maybe, Jim O'Neill suggests, this is a chance to practice, to see what it's like to have a big role in a, in a big multilateral institution. China is far and away obviously the biggest of the BRICS economies, uh, overshadows all of them. Uh, they've come up with this idea that there will be equal funding, $10 billion from each of them, so they'll be on equal footing in that respect. Uh, there was always the feeling that it's going to be overrun by Chinese money, by Chinese priorities, and they've tried to work against that. Maybe if Shanghai does come out, it's in apparently the front runner for, uh, to be the, the, the home of the bank. And maybe that's just an acknowledgement that, yeah, the, the biggest hitter in the room is China.